The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Benjamin J. Heckendorf. Every week he takes on new projects, shares tips and tricks, and answers your viewer questions on The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. Today we're doing the third and final part of the remote dog treat dispenser. In part one, we built the mechanical device itself to dispense the treats. In part two, we connected that device electronically to the Raspberry Pi. Today, we're going to get the Raspberry Pi hooked up to the internet with a webcam, so a remote viewer can see the images and control the dispenser. Let's get started. But first, the news. Today in Ben News, I'd like to show you my awesome new monitor stand. So I had this LCD monitor laying around. It was gonna be used in a pinball machine, but then we ended up not doing that. So I thought, hey, I should do some of that monitor. It's just been sitting around collecting dust for months. So I thought, hey, I could bolt some two by fours up to my desk here and then stick the monitor to it and have a secondary monitor for programming off my laptop for pinball machines. Look how awesome it is. And then I could hook up my iPad here and watch Netflix. So today we're gonna to get the Raspberry Pi hooked up to the internet so we can have internet dog feeding control. Here are the steps. Well, at first start a remote SSH connection to the Pi secure shell that will allow an external device to log into the Linux system and make sure it works over the internet. We're gonna put a Wi-Fi dongle on it for the connection. Then we're gonna hook a webcam up to the Raspberry Pi. I found a list of webcams that work on Linux. Uh, I think I'm using a Logitech one. We also had to get a library called Motion which allows the Pi to use the webcam and stream the data. The Pi is going to have a web server on it, which is going to serve a web page. And this web page is just a very simple HTML file that has the video from the webcam and two buttons. Those two buttons allow an external web viewer to click on them to either alert the dog, the flashing light, or feed them, cycle out a bone. So let's get started. Before we get started with the internet stuff, I need to hook up a good power supply to the Raspberry Pi. So we need five volts for both the USB hub and the Pi itself. USB usually only has around 500 milliamps per connection. That's usually what it's rated for. And uh, we have to make sure we don't you know, run out of power. So the first thing I tried was taking this um, switching voltage regulator, having two 7805s on it, then hooking it up to this external 12 volt supply, then plugging that into the Pi. And it worked, but the linear regulators got too warm. So what I replaced it with was this. This is a switching voltage regulator package that I got from Element 14. What it does is it takes a you know, higher voltage, like 12 volts, and knocks it down to five volts, just like a linear regulator. However, a switching voltage regulator is much more efficient, which means it uses less power to do it, and it stays cooler, which is what we want in this case. Then I realized I didn't need my USB hub because the only thing that actually needs to be hooked up to this in operation is the Wi-Fi dongle and the USB camera, so that's good. So I'm going to plug in our little power supply here. And this five volt jack is gonna power the Pi, the USB lines, the servo and everything. Plug it in to our power supply and turn it on. All right, now the Raspberry Pi is booting up. So we can actually use a command line externally to get into the Linux on this. So you don't need a screen on the Pi itself in this case. So while it boots, I'm gonna start up my phone. Are you an engineer? Do you like getting your hands on the latest technology? Do you like free stuff? Then you should head over to the Element 14 site so you can check out the Road Test Program, where they'll send you free products in exchange for your feedback. Here's how it works. Start by visiting element14.com to log in or register for free. You can also access Road Test at any time by visiting element14.com forward slash road test. Here you'll find information on all the current products available to their road testers in a simple enrollment form and be sure to tell them why you'd be a great road tester for that product. You can enroll in as many road tests as you like. There's no limit to the number of products you can test. If you're selected to be a tester, your free products will be shipped right to your door. The new equipment is 100% yours to keep. No contracts, returns, or purchases necessary. After you've become an expert with your new e-gear, head back to the element14.com community and let everyone know what you think. Sounds like a sweet deal to me. Go to element14.com forward slash road test to enroll today. Now, back to the show. Now that the Pi is booted up, I'm going to use an app on my Android phone called ConnectBot to connect to it for the command line interface from Linux. So I've logged into the Raspberry Pi. So I'm actually, I don't need a monitor on the Pi. I've got it on my phone, going over my local network here. 
So I'm gonna change directory to dog and then look what's inside the directory, okay. Super user do python space flash dot python. Okay, the flashing works. And again, I'm doing this over the network to the local IP address on this Wi-Fi module on the Raspberry Pi, but I could do this over the internet. And that's actually what we will do uh, later on in the episode. And super user python treat py. All right. So we know that we can connect to it over the internet, over this wireless connection. So the next step is to test the web page. So we're gonna do a test just locally here. I just typed in the local IP address of the Raspberry Pi on my shop network. So we can see it here on the computer screen. Uh, the refresh rate isn't that great. Again, you know, Raspberry Pi isn't like a super computer or anything, but it definitely works. So, you know, not even if you were feeding your dog, but like some home security or you could watch your garage or something, or it could be like a SkyMall spy item. Really a number of things you could do with it. So let's test this out. Uh, I'm going to hit feed and it should give us a bone. Nom, 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 nom. All right, and then so now the video is back so I could see my, let's say my hand's a dog, this is me enjoying the bone. I'm sure the dog doesn't even care about the camera though. He's like, why did my owner build this? All right, so uh, before we move on to the next part, we're going to show you how the port forwarding works with your home network. That's how you would have to, if you're outside your home network and you attach your IP address on your router, you've got to have ports forward in order to get into it. I need to forward some ports on my shop router before I do this. So I go into my router setup here, and I think it's under applications and gaming. Oh yes, I had to do this back in the uh, Call of Duty Nazi Zombies day to do the co-op. You had to forward ports on the PC. Anyway, there's three ports I need to add. Uh, there's 22, 80, and 8081. So what I'm doing is I'm external connections, like from the World Wide Web, if they go to my router's IP address, which is on the internet, my router will forward itself or forward those ports to the Raspberry Pi's address. So on the screen you can see 22, 80, and 8081. Those are all being forwarded to uh, 192, 168, 1, 114, which is the Raspberry Pi. And we need 80 and 81 for uh, web connections. 22, we use that for the um, SSH connection. So it looks like we're good here. So I'll hit save. And this is not very secure, but it'll at least work for our demonstration purposes. So now the outside world can communicate to the Raspberry Pi. So instead of typing the internal address, 192.168.1.114, you could type in the shop's IP address and a web connection goes to port 80. So port 80 externally would get tunneled to the Raspberry Pi. Well, we have the device all finished, but we need a dog to test it with. Who's at the door? Oh, hi, Pooch. Lola, huh? Well, I guess this cute, fuzzy dog that showed up on my door can help me film the demonstration of my dog treat dispenser. Are you gonna be a star? Yeah, but then you'll forget about me and you move on to someone else. Yeah, you wouldn't do that, would you? No, your fluffy hair. <laughs> Give me kisses. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna test this again. Uh, Lola certainly wants a treat, so we're gonna lure her with the light, and then we're gonna hit the feed button, which will dispense her a nice, yummy treat. And Lola's ace handler, Paulette, is here to help as well. All right, looks like Lola, oh, she's waiting for a bone. Let's give her one. Give the dog a bone. So it turns out it takes one cycle for your dog to figure out bones come out of it. Then they can't stop wanting the bones. Ah, see, we can see Lola eating the bone on the screen. So like if I'm at work and I'm having a heart day, oh, it's my cute pet. They're so cute. Ah, that's my impression of a pet lover. So there you have it. Remote controlled, web enabled dog treat dispenser. Today's viewer question comes from Michael who asks, I have an early 2000s flat panel tube TV, which I prefer to LCD or plasma. 
However, it cuts off a bit of the image around the edges. Is there anything I can do about this? Well, Michael, the effect you discuss is called overscan. Modern TVs show basically every pixel of the image, but older ones tend to crop it somewhat. Really old TVs had more or less rounded screens, so those cropped it even more. Aside from externally scaling the image or messing with the internal and dangerous electron beam wiring, there's not much you can do about it. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we're taking the show on the road, or rather the sky, to Design West 2013 in San Jose. We'll be filming an up close and personal look at all of the cool new gadgets in the electronics and embedded systems world. And I'll get to ask other people questions for a change. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS, where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching.